Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In the fifth episode of I Tried It So You Didn't Have To. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about SDesk. Now, I found SDesk. Uh, it was one of the distributions released in uh, either late January or early February. And uh, it's a Canadian based distribution based on Arch. And I believe it stands for Steve's Desk. Uh, it's currently 120th in the distro watch rankings so you won't find it in here you have to go a little bit further and here it is it's down in 199th position with 41 hits per day and that's in the last 12 months 120th in the last six months six months 61st in the last three months and 44th in the last month so if we go back to if we go back to this list let me change this to last 30 days there you will see it's in the distro watch rankings so <clears throat> here's uh, Steve Studios uh, where the home of SDesk and it says it's the faster, more secure operating system. It's free and open source with all the latest technology, it includes GNOME 45, Wayland Windows, and the Libra Office Suite and more. Now, I normally have problems with Wayland, but because I do these videos in a virtual machine, um, I shouldn't have the problems that I normally have. Uh, the problem usually comes when it comes to screencasting software in uh, Linux with Wayland. Um, but as I'm recording this in a virtual machine, it'll be using the screen recording on the main host. So if you go to the downloads page, there's a 64-bit ISO for your desktop. Um, there's a Pac-Man install for installing Swirl, which I believe is the browser. And then something for the Mac as well. So I've already downloaded the ISO. So if you want to follow along, uh, download the ISO. Uh, you will need um, a virtual machine, um, such as a virtual box, uh, a hypervisor. And so we can see that I've got it downloaded here. We'll get into what these things are later on. Um, but that's to do with some AI stuff I've been messing around with online. Uh, so here we've got SDesk. If I go into Virtual Machines, if I click on New, I can type in SDesk. I'm going to store it on my SSD. Now I had a little look. Um, previously at this but I didn't really get too far into it um, so I'm just going to call it SDesk2 and we're going to click open there and it's a Linux based this Arch installation and then we're going to ramp that all the way along click create okay, it's 25 gigabytes click create Go to settings and then under system, go to the processor, ramp that up to four, uh, go to display, ramp the video right up, and we're now good to go. And I can click start. It's going to ask me to choose my distro, so I click add, and then I choose S Desk from here, and click start. And the first thing I can do is choose install SDesk, which I'm going to do. It took a good couple of minutes to boot into the desktop. Uh, it's finally come up with the installer, so we'll, we'll quickly run through it. You've seen it all before. British English. Obviously, if you're new to the channel, you probably haven't seen it before, but uh, it's, it's fairly easy to follow along with. Um, pick where you are on the map, or you can choose your region or location. Choose your keyboard layout. Uh, choose where you want to install it. This is a virtual machine, so you can go for a raised disk. If you're doing it to actual hardware, uh, then I thoroughly recommend backing up your system first. Uh, SDesk is um, 
obviously one of the smaller distributions um, so I have no idea where this is going to lead me so click next uh, choose a username you can give your computer a name as well I've left it as the default uh, it tells you if your password is not very good obviously it's a test machine so I'm not that worried and then we're at the summary and you can click install and then go for install now I'll leave that to run and I'll restart the video at the point that it's ready to reboot so we got to about 48% and then this happened and it also went to the lock screen um, and after coming up from the lock screen it did this and so we're going to have to do it again. So I'm not going to lie, it took three attempts to get SDesk installed and even on the third attempt it failed uh, but I thought I'd try rebooting the computer and taking the USB drive out, uh, the ISO out of the virtual machine and it boots um, but it's left a live user behind so in theory I can still log in as live and it, the live account is just giving you the generic uh, GNOME settings. If I log out and I log back in as Gary, I ended up putting a one character password in. I was so fed up having to keep setting up the user screen. So my password is a single character. Uh, you can see I am now within SDesk. This is the default start screen. Let's try go full screen mode. We don't get that. Let's try changing the display settings. So if I go to one oh, if I go to one nine twenty by one oh eighty and click apply, hopefully that will work. I can keep that, and you see I'm in full screen mode. So everything's good at that point. So I've already plugged in my USB Wi-Fi dongle and I've attached it to my virtual machine. You can see that here. So I've got Bluetooth and wireless there. So I should be able to connect to Wi-Fi. And you can see Wi-Fi is available. And I should be able to go to Bluetooth it says turn on Bluetooth. Uh, it's turned off. So if I click that, uh, you can see nothing's happening. And if I go to a terminal, and type Bluetooth. Air command not found, so I don't think Bluetooth is actually installed. We'll come back to that later. Uh, let's have a look at printing. It's quite responsive, it's not too bad, especially as it's GNOME based. It's normally not um, very responsive, but uh, it seems to be okay. Uh, so I have to unlock the user and then we can click add here and then I can go to network printers and hopefully and yes you can see it's picked up my office jet search for drivers and then it's chosen Dymo as the recommended you thought HP would have been because Dymo is a label printer so if I go to HP I don't know why it's picked that um, I'll we'll just continue. And I can print a test page and see if it comes out okay if I wanted to. Um, you could also install the HP lip package and that will give us a better print um, options I think. But you can set up a printer. Uh, under the applications uh, you can see we've got uh, a lot of Base GNO maps, so weather clocks, maps, uh, a VN server browser, uh, we've got videos, camera, system monitor. Most of these are 
GNOME Basics or GNOME Boxes is like a virtual machine manager type thing, a uh, hypervisor. Uh, got a terminal under utilities. Uh, document viewer, image viewer, disks, standard GNOME utilities, and they've got the Libre Office Suite, you've got GNOME extensions, and not much else. The I'm not sure what this software token thing is, but we've also got Octopi Cache Cleaner, and Octopi is down here on the menu as well. Um, so we'll come out of there and we'll look at this option here, it's called the Swirl web browser so it's a, a different type of web browser and we'll go to we'll go to the Everyday Linux user YouTube page So you can see it doesn't actually go to the page, it just searched for in DuckDuckGo, so I actually have to now click on that. I bet it loads up. I'm going to minimise that because we'll use that for the Bluetooth a bit later on. Uh, let's have a look at how to install software, so we'll go to Octopi. Pacman database is missing, you may need a synchronized database. So uh, I tried Pacman minus S um, just to see if Pacman was installed. It says you can't perform it as root, so I did it without root. Uh, and then it gave me a hint uh, minus SY. I did sudo Pacman minus SY, and you can see it's um, synchronized these databases here. So if I close that now and go into Octopi. You can see we've now got a load of groups available. So maybe now we can search for something like Chromium. And Chromium is there. And let's try and install Chromium. You need to set an administrative password. Uh, you can see it said error failed to commit transaction, invalid or corrupted packages, signature, command finished with errors. Does that mean it did or didn't do what I wanted it to do? So I'm not having the best of times with SDesk. Let's try a different package, let's try Firefox. Interesting, it's now doing Chromium, Firefox, a few other packages. Let's see how that gets on. You can see it's coming up with all sorts of other messages. It said, Do you want to run it in terminal? So I chose yes, and we'll, we'll see what happens now. It says, I've got a corrupted package. Do you want to delete it? So we say yes. So where, where's that left us? Have we got anything? That didn't install anything as far as I can tell. Right, let's try from the terminal. I'm going to say no to this this time. It 
So you can see I'm having no success with that at all. So without being able to install software, we're going to struggle to get Bluetooth working. Now I could spend a great deal of time fixing Pac-Man and getting it working and following the guys and trying to unpick what parts have actually gone wrong with this. I've looked for uh, through the Arch documentation for this and to be honest as the everyday Linux user I honestly can't be bothered. Why anyone would want to do all this I have no idea. The truth is if I want a Arch based distribution that's working I could use Manjaro, I can use Endeavor, I can use Garuda. I could even get Arch itself running uh, with the GNOME desktop with everything uh, running um, in a more straightforward fashion than it would be to fix this. The fact that during the most basic step, which is installation, I couldn't get the thing to install all the way through makes me feel like my system is already corrupted before I've even started. So whilst I'm able to log in and I'm able to run an application or two, I have no confidence in this whatsoever. So at the moment, this is gonna stick as a distribution probably down in the lower hundreds because people aren't going to be able to get it working and they're going to lose patience and why would you put yourself through this when they're, even the base arch is easier to set up than uh, SDesk and it's a shame because you know I mean it looks okay uh, as a distribution it's just there's not much to it anyway I mean what you're getting you're getting stock GNOME LibreOffice suite and whatever this swirl browser is. So I'm, it's not like you're getting anything special by installing S Desk. So um, it's a thumbs down for me on this one, I'm afraid. Uh, it's not often I give something a thumbs down um, with no caveats of, oh, it might be useful for this, might be useful for that. I can't see um, a good reason for using this at this moment in time it does it doesn't install it doesn't install and it doesn't work so um and that's it that's the end of the review if you liked it give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and if you're one of the developers of um, sdesk um maybe you can tell me why um it won't install what's going on because maybe it's something i'm doing um, and if it's something i'm doing it's something other people will do as well so yeah, if if you're there, um, feel free to leave me a comment, and I'm happy to address your comment, and I'm happy to have another one run at this if if you tell me it's working and I've I've just gone in the wrong direction. But at the moment, uh, it's uh, the end of the video. Thank you for watching.